you very much. And right along the line of what he, uh, the CISO just mentioned, we have another presentation, and um, and this is in person, I believe. Yeah, and um, I believe your. Um, Presentation is on cybersecurity for public services, critical infrastructure, best practices. Is that correct? Come on up, please, and introduce yourself. And thank you so much for joining us today. Can you hear me? Okay, yes. So let's do it. Uh, very good morning. All right. Um, yeah. My name is Abhi, uh, Abhi Thorat. Uh, I am the CTO of a cybersecurity uh, boutique consulting company that's based in Seattle. Uh, and, uh, and I'm very happy to be here. And I'm here in the capacity of um, a professional in terms of, um, yeah, in the capacity of a professional and to share what we have, um, share, share the lessons learned that we have sort of from the industry, <clears throat> the customers that we've been working on, and the other insights um, that we have gained from um, industry associations like NIST, PINWAR, and such. So, and um, um, yeah, and you know, Representative Ryu thought this was good. <laughs> Just the chair. <laughs> <laughs> this was a good combination. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, and uh, happy to be here. So yeah. <clears throat> Of course, cy cybersecurity is um, not a new uh, concept. So we'll just sort of uh, brush over it to get ourselves oriented. Uh, I'll walk through some, yeah. <clears throat> so what I, I'm just here to share about, uh, the, as I said, the lessons learned and where we learned them from, the industry affiliations, which ones, and and <clears throat> just sort of seg, you know, this sort of, uh, it's almost like a segue from the last presentation from uh, Mr. Johnson. And um, I would like to sort of focus more on, as um, uh, one of the representatives brought up about like industrial control systems and utilities and such. Um, in our case, we'll be focusing a little bit on water systems and, yeah, and towards the end, then we'll sort of go over best practices uh, for industrial control systems, so. All right, <clears throat> so, so why is cybersecurity important for critical infrastructure? So there's, here's some background. So on the left side, you'll see, so there's uh, 16 critical infrastructure sectors sort of you know, defined. Um, and here's, it's, they've been specced out over here. Uh, and they, they, they range from you know, transportation, like water systems. So anything that a, that a living citizen um, needs to go about doing their uh, work, you know, business, personal life. Different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. So th yeah, this is more or less like the definition of what the critical infrastructures are. And we'll focus more on the ones that we've had experience with um, that are under the jurisdiction of uh, counties um, and cities and such. So which is more or less like water systems is one of the examples. And to the, towards the right, right, it's just, um, so there's some stats for about uh, how, how the uh, industry has been affected by, you know, the bad players, bad actors. Here's an example for ransomware. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, government sector is just sort of the uh, uh, top one affected. And, and we'll, we'll go through in terms of how, how we can address this. Right? So here are some of the recent projects uh, we did where we sort of uh, learned a lot of lessons. And Pierce County, well, they, they or Pierce County did a good job with uh, their security stuff. Um, we've done some work in San Mateo County, and um, we have background in <clears throat> a larger infrastructure on the telecom side as well. So we done a lot of design, build, and secure. So uh, the place, what I, the message is. So we have good experience around the technology and um, good insights into where the security um, uh, usually loopholes are. And as I mentioned, so these are some of the industry affiliate. Uh, so this is some of the places that we've gotten our insights from. So on the on the on the bottom, you'll see NIST. So NIST is the standards uh, create uh, is is this yeah is this uh, standards uh, body. And uh, we're trying to work over there to 
create some standards and best practices around um, specific use cases, such as uh, PSAPs, you know, PSAPs, public sector, and say water systems and such. They already have uh, working groups and teams, and uh, so we are pretty passionate about um, taking it and executing it and getting some feedback from the field and tweaking it. So that's. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so a little bit about, you know, what are industrial control systems, right? Yeah, maybe this is better, okay. So what are industrial control systems? So, um, <clears throat> all right, so any, any I'd say, so well, in, uh, anything that runs in an industrial setup, right? W water, water, uh, water systems, um, water waste management, <clears throat> energy, utilities. Uh, so they have, you know, uh, systems, um, which are used for like instrumentation and managing them to make sure you know the operational efficiencies there and so some of the examples of let's take the example of a water system over here so some of the industrial control systems let's say control valves you have control valves which, you know, shut water off switch them on uh, then you have other other you know instrumentation other you know gadgets uh, around uh, to making sure that the uh, you know, the contents of the water, right, in terms of, so the valves are more along the physical aspect of the motion of the water in terms of uh, flow and such. Then there's other characteristics such as, you know, the quality of the water, the portability of the water, uh, the, you know, chlorine content and such. Um, and yeah, the reason for selection of this was there was, a, there was an incident last year in Florida uh, where uh, the systems were hacked and sodium hydroxide, which, um, uh, the content of it was sort of um, mal uh, manipulated to make it 100 times uh, more, which could have you know affected the 15,000 citizens. But it was caught in time, and it was but it was quite a bit of a uh, wake-up call in terms of uh, uh, in, you know the risk aspect. All right, so now, <clears throat> all right, so this is sort of a basic stuff in terms of why do we need them, right? So. We need the industrial control systems for you know real time, real time. You know, making sure that basically it's 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 driven by operational efficiency, right? So we have a huge plant, and um, a lot of the devices and processes are automated. So we want um, systems which are running in real time and have capabilities such as remote management, and we get all the you know benefits out of it. And end of the day, you know. Citizen folks, they get you know clean drinking water or you know usable water, you uh, know in, in a consistent and reliable way day to day. So this way, when we get up tomorrow morning, yeah, we'll yeah we'll have running water, and um, yeah, that should be a good thing. All right. So yeah. So given all right. So I'll just talk a little bit about um, so industrial control systems. Um, so industrial control systems were designed and de you know, deployed uh, a few decades ago when there was less connectivity uh, between the systems. Right? So as I said, the first point is like the legacy systems, right? So due to the fact that they were designed really uh, a while ago, they struggled with complying with the modern security requirements because now uh, one of the big drivers that we keep hearing about is like digital transformation and yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, a lot of people get enamored by it, and um, it's they just sort of uh, jump on the bandwagon, and um, and it's the industrial control systems and the industrial folks who sort of uh, struggle with catching up. And so the other term for industrial control system is operational technology. So right now, um, so the other. Um, to give, give more context is uh, we know IT, right? We know IT every day in terms of this is all like IT. We had like a lot of, I got to see a lot of IT-ishness through like, passing bills too. <laughs> um, so there's there's very high um, uh, literacy around usage, safe usage of IT and managing and leading of IT. Uh, so that's, you know, that's, we're talking about computer systems uh, running around for organizations, government organization businesses. Uh, which have data, and um, yeah, so it's 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 there's this uh, high level of comfort in terms of securing it and keeping it safe, as compared to operational technology. Operational technology is the technology you know 
deployed for operating the industrial aspects of automation, instrumentation, and such. And um, so until fairly recently, um, so the operational technology people, right? So water, let's say the water systems people. So they they come from a different profession, different line, different vertical, um, you know, and um, and they operate like the valves and such, which have been like though they are um, there's electronics and there's high end embedded software in it. It's still isolated. It, it was still isolated. So there was. Um, if they could take care of just that electric you know, valve and the connections over there, it was good enough. But now with, you know, again, the, the thing with digital transformation is there's gonna be a marriage or a combination of IT and OT, and, um, and, there's, and there's some you know, really big caveats um, over there because there's, there's a gap. Uh, there's a huge gap, and and these are some of the gaps. These are some of the gaps. So because industrial systems, ICS, or industrial control systems, haven't really uh, uh, say, developed at a pace at which you know, quote unquote, IT and cloud has been like uh, developing. So there's this huge gap, and uh, so that's why we sort of you know um, call it legacy. Um, and so why is it behind? Because um, so under the hood, right, uh, in the weeds, um, the protocols and uh, communication methodology and stuff used were from uh, really uh, previous uh, decades, and it's 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 not been designed for uh, communicating with IT network as much, and um, yeah, and and the other thing is, um, so. Even uh, once once you have once once you have like an industrial once you have a water treatment plant set up right and it's it's okay it's running now now you have to maintain it in terms of life cycle um, the any updates that you have to make on it security updates or any software updates it it it, it affects the you know it it has uh, you know it, it has you need to have like a maintenance window or schedule it it affects the operations cause it could has high potentiality for downtime. And then anytime there's um, there's some changes done, there's a you know huge need to retest it just to make sure while you're trying to fix one thing, it doesn't break something else. And uh, yeah, and so one of the last point over here is you know critical infrastructure is no longer air gapped. So this is what it was. So earlier, the aspect of air gapped is you know operational techno operational technology is sort of it runs by itself. It has nothing to do with IT and the other. Uh, um, other, you know, other ecosystem as it comes to the landscape of the architecture. But now, you know, considering all the digital transformation and the cloud um, uh, adoption, this is, yeah, that's why we chose this. We thought, you know, it's, it's a good one. And um, all right. So, yeah, we can talk a little bit about best practices. So as, you know, as, as my previous uh, uh, Speaker, uh, Mr. Johnson, he mentioned about. So the biggest one we've identified is um, the GRC aspect of things in terms of like governance, or, you know, risk management and compliance. And um, so the huge feedback that we've gotten from industry is, um, yeah, you know, there's the leadership and senior management, right, who come up with the policies um, and the policies are made and they are kept somewhere. Um, and yeah, so, so there's like a huge missing link in terms of, so what we have noticed is, uh, so there's a need to come up with like detailed procedures um, to make the policy uh, sense. And the procedures need to be followed and they need to be enforced. Um, so yeah, the procedures um, not being enforceable was uh, quite a bit of uh, feedback that we saw and in, yeah, so somehow if, if we can make the procedures more um, enforceable, um, and, and so one of the one of the way could be, okay, so in terms of, um, so the standards body has a NIST, um, a NIST uh, um, 800, um, and does the standard for enterprises and organizations, and if we could somehow, you know, make it mandatory or somehow, and encourage people more to um, yeah. formulate those and, and you know live by them. I think that that would be a big uh, big thing. 
And yeah, and this are the, so the rest are, you know, physical security, of course, the industrial country, the water plants and the energy system, they need to have, they need to be physically secured. Okay, now the other one is the network architecture. So what that means is, um, <clears throat> now we know that the, um, the water plant is gonna be a part of the larger network of the city or the county, uh, then uh, it, yeah. so when, when the net larger network, the larger technical architecture is being designed, so the OT or the industrial control systems need to be you know considered right from the design phase and not uh, as a later um, you know, later in the you know uh, process. That's one. Then once you have a network that's been um, uh, architected, considering that, and you have a separate network now for ICS. Now you put a like perimeter around it, have firewalls and such. So this way, um, it's I you know you it's like a defense in depth, or it's more like a layered approach. So it's so you'll have an um, ICS network by itself, which has its own policies, procedures, and. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, the engineering specs for it to stay uh, isolated, right? And getting more granular is, so within the IC, say for example, within the water system plants, right? So you have the flow meters, you have the pH meters, you have the chemical sensors and such. So each of these devices also have embedded software in it. So we make sure that each of those devices are safe by themselves. So this way, if one of them gets compromised, it doesn't affect the others. And even if it affects the others, then we sort of um, invoke the you know defense in depth. So we just make sure it, it's sort of uh, it's contained, right? It's contained within that uh, architecture or within that network boundary. And yeah, so once we have this design deployed, then you know there's a need to um, monitor it, um, uh, monitor it for you know any anomalous behavior or just to make sure you know things are fine. And, um, and and then there's again you know complete uh, set of uh, engineering practices around it in terms of uh, having an incident response plan, which actually goes back to the GRC in terms of uh, okay once you have the policies and such, and there's like a lot of policies. Incident response is one of the big ones, and so one of the things that we have noticed is okay there uh, we need to practice the incident response just like we have a, like a fire drill in the buildings, so the is incident response need to be practiced. Uh, one of the things we've seen, so one of the big parts is like um, backup disaster recovery. So there are plans for it, um, but if they're not tested, it's, um, yeah, the statistic is pretty high for if it's not tested and when you need it, it's not gonna work. All right, well, thank you very much, Abby, for yeah. the very comprehensive overview. Um, are there any questions of Abby from the Strategic Alliance Consulting? Yes, it, Representative Ibarra. So back to compliance. So I was, uh, again, I mentioned earlier, I worked for utilities, so I was the compliance officer and an auditor for all the SIP standards in the utilities and stuff. So I can see where it's easy for the feds to come up with SIP standards, critical infrastructure protection standards. Um, but how does, like the water industry, do they have a, uh, a NERC type organization that can put together standards for you so the industry can follow those standards. And then with that in place, can they have an auditing uh, group that comes in and audits all these companies? Um, again, in the in electrical world, uh, you know, my company was fined $450,000 for not following all the SIP standards or any of the standards. Abby, so, could you make it super short? Because we have two more uh, presentations. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. thanks. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. So, in, um, yeah, there there are organizations and uh, associations. There's like Water.gov, which does have. Um, they do come up with um, recommendations like for best practices, and um, so there's an inter oh, <clears throat> And so, yeah, yeah, I want to share this. Um, so there's something called as ISAC is information sharing, uh, and there's a Water ISAC. Uh, so we've recently signed up with them, and it's 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 quite. Uh, uh, it's very insightful. So they do send incident reports and what's going on, and um, yeah. So there is there is an infra, there's an infrastructure of um, sharing information and being aware of it. It's just uh, I think the leaders uh, and the senior managers need to be made aware of it, and the engineering staff also needs to be um, aware and educated of how can they sort of you know put it into practice and, and sort of give a feedback and then keep that cycle going.
Thank you very much. I'd love to geek out all day, but we don't have all day. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you so very much for your presentation. So we will uh, basically um, go really detailed.